Very rarely, the SAT will include radians in a geometry question. In this lesson, we'll cover pretty much everything you need to know about radians for the SAT. Let's start by being clear about what radians are. They're a way to measure angles, just like degrees. Let's use an analogy. We can measure distance using different units, like centimeters and inches. A ruler is typically 12 inches, which is approximately 30 centimeters. The distance is the same, but the units use different numbers. Degrees and radians are just like inches and centimeters. Degrees and radians might use different numbers, but they are both measuring the openness of an angle. Luckily for us, the SAT gives us the most important conversion. It's at the bottom of the SAT reference sheet, which is given to you on every SAT math question. The number of degrees of arc in a circle is 360, and the number of radians of arc in a circle is 2 pi. To put it simply, 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. In school, you might have had to memorize the unit circle, which includes the radian measures for a lot of different angles. You really don't need to remember all those angles for the SAT. This conversion and the Desmos calculator will give us everything we need. Most questions involving radians will ask us to convert to or from degrees. Let's see how it's done using the information from the reference sheet. How many degrees is 3 pi over 8 radians? First, set up a ratio comparing degrees and radians. One side of that ratio will always be our conversion from the reference sheet. The other side should mimic the conversion. We put x on top to represent the unknown degrees, and 3 pi over 8 on the bottom to match the 2 pi radians on the bottom of the other fraction. To isolate x, we can multiply by the denominator. It happens to be a fraction, but don't let that bother you. If the bottom were 7, you'd multiply the top by 7 to cancel it out. We're doing the exact same thing. But we also have to multiply on the other side for balance. When we do that, the pi's will cancel out, which is good because degree measurements don't usually include pi. Simplify the fractions to find that 3 pi over 8 radians is equivalent to 67.5 degrees. This process will still work if they reverse the question. How many radians is 240 degrees? We can still set up our ratio using the reference sheet conversion, but I recommend flipping it upside down. I generally prefer to keep the x on the top of a fraction, and since our x is the number of radians, we also want radians on the top of the conversion. But it really doesn't matter what's on top, as long as you're consistent with both of the ratios. Isolate x by multiplying both sides by 240. Reduce the fraction to find that 240 degrees is equivalent to 4 pi over 3. Radian measures will almost always include pi. Of course, you can also use the conversion formulas that you probably learned in school. To me, these are hard to remember and easy to mess up, but they work as long as you plug in for the right variable. Another trick I was taught is that you can quickly turn radians into degrees by replacing the pi in the radian measure with 180 and simplifying. Whether you use the conversion ratios from the previous slides or one of these methods, just be consistent. You don't want to make a careless mistake on radians questions because you can't decide how to solve them. Occasionally, the SAT will ask you to perform some basic trigonometry. It's rare that you would need the sine, cosine, or tangent buttons on the calculator, but if you end up using them, you need to pay attention to the calculator's settings. In this Desmos calculator, I typed sine of 2 pi and sine of 360, which are supposed to be equivalent angle measurements but the calculator doesn't know that we are giving it two different units. I know that this calculator is working in radians because I remember that the sine of 2 pi and 360 is supposed to be zero, and the top equation gives us the correct answer. If you click the settings button in the top right of Desmos, you'll see a menu that shows us that the calculator is set to radians. This is the default setting, so the calculator will use radians unless you change it to degrees. If we do, we now see that sine of 360 gives the correct value. In July 2025, the SAT added a scientific calculator in Desmos. If we switch to the scientific calculator, we now see whether the calculator is in radians or degrees much more easily. The equations verify this. And if we switch from radians to degrees, we see that the bottom equation is now giving the correct value. But if we return to the graphing calculator, the mode is still in radians. This is because the radian and degree settings don't sync between the graphing and scientific calculators. All of this is to say that confusing radians and degrees is a very, very common mistake, not just on the SAT, but anytime you work with angles. 
It's about as common as confusing diameter and radius in circles, or the x and y coordinates of a point on a graph. You really don't want to get radians questions wrong on the SAT. They may seem difficult because we learn about radians pretty late in high school math, but we don't need to know much about them for the SAT. Remember that the conversion is in the reference sheet. Use it to set up ratios and solve, and if you need to use the calculator, make sure you're in the correct setting. If you can remember that, these should be easy.